cold blooded. Cold blooded. They're slimy. Amphibians. Where are they? Oh, there's one. They're slimy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Property of matter. T minus seven seconds. the science guy. Brought to you by the Warbling Wolverine, featuring Don't Take My Heart, cause you'll just rip it in two. Perhaps you recognize them. Now, tadpoles start out living like fish, but after a few weeks, they change into something else. They change into frogs. They're amphibians. Amphibian is from old Greek words that mean living in two worlds. See, amphibians live in the water and on the land. So take a look at this. It's our amphibian life cycle sequence of science. And here we have frogs in three different stages of their lives. These are frog eggs. They're tiny and they're soft. They don't have hard shells like the eggs we eat for breakfast. When they hatch, they turn into these. Tadpoles. They're a lot like fish. They have backbones and they breathe oxygen right out of the water they live in. They have gills. Now as the weeks go by, they'll sprout legs and they'll stop breathing oxygen out of the water and they'll turn into frogs. I mean, uh, frogs. Sorry, had an amphibian in my throat. They breathe oxygen right out of the air, just like we do. They're amphibians. Amphibians change. They go through what we call metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is from old Greek words that mean changing form. Look it up! Now, most amphibians in the world are frogs and toads, but there's also newts and salamanders, and there's Sicilians, worm or snake-like animals that live in South America and Asia. We don't have those amphibians in North America. See, amphibians were the first animals to change from living in the water to living on land. Amphibians, animals that are something like fish out of water, the most primitive land animals, a group believed to be the ancestors of all vertebrates that live on land. Once upon a time in a land both near and far away, a beautiful princess kissed a frog. Frogs come in all sizes. You've got your small, Hello. your spring peeper, you got your medium, this is your American bullfrog, Hello. and you got your large. This is your uh, African pixie cephalus. Hey. That means pinhead, because they, they have a small head compared to their body. I mean, they, they're big, but they have a small head, right? Who are you calling a pinhead? Science rules. Science. Science. These are tadpoles. Just wanted to make sure you got a good close look at them. See, right now they're breathing oxygen out of the water, taking water in through their mouths and out their gills. Pretty soon, though, they'll lose their gills and get lungs. And they'll become cold blooded killers. Whoa. That's right, they're amphibians, they're cold blooded. And right now, they eat plants, algae, and stuff. But pretty soon, they'll eat meat. Oh, boy. Mm. Yeah, well, it's a living. <laughs> These are salamanders. When they're in this tank, you can get a good close look at them. They look like frogs. 
That's because they are like frogs. They breathe through their nostrils and they eat insects. And look at their hands and feet. They're adapted so they can walk on the land or swim through the water. <laughs> See how they can swim and walk at the same time? This, this is Mr. Squirmy. They look like they have scaly skin, but they don't. That's just camouflage. They have slippery, slimy skin. Because <laughs> they're amphibians. This is a Sicilian. Uh, you can see it real clearly when it's in this tank. Yeah. It looks like a snake or a worm, but it's not. It has slimy skin, and it's got a little face with eyes and teeth. Look at the little face. Uh, it's an amphibian. Cute. Most amphibians live the first part of their lives where? That's right, in the water. And the rest of their lives on what? Land. Yes. Yeah. Take a look at this. See his skin? It's slimy, not scaly. That's because he's an amphibian. See, he's, he's not a reptile. <laughs> and see him breathing? He's breathing with lungs, just like you and I have. Only amphibians had him first about 400 million years ago. Hey, those were the days, eh, Froggy? Yeah. Frogs and salamanders use slime to stay alive. Slime keeps them from drying out and it lets them breathe through their skin. Their skins act as accessory breathing organs. See, amphibians have skin that lets in water and oxygen. Not like humans. Our skin keeps the water out and our insides in. Here's an experiment you can do to see how amphibian skin works. Take a large jar and you fill it almost to the top with water. Then you take a small jar and you fill it almost like all the way to the top without spilling over with hot water. And you take food coloring. This is blue food coloring. Mm -hmm. Pour it in like that. Oh my God, it's gonna spill. Take a paper towel, cut it in a square like this and a rubber band. Now very carefully set the paper towel on the top and the rubber band goes around it. <laughs> it's way over the top. Oh. Here's one I prepared earlier. Put the small jar into the big jar. Now you gotta wait. See, the paper towel's like amphibian skin. It looks solid, but really, it has tiny little holes. See, now there's food coloring in both the jars. Slimy amphibian skin works the same way. It lets water and oxygen in and out to keep a frog happy and healthy. About half of the oxygen they require is absorbed into the bloodstream through the thin walls of their skin. If their skin were to dry out, the frogs would suffocate. Before we go much farther, there's just one thing I'd like to clear up. Amphibians are not fish. Amphibians are not reptiles, okay? Because they do not have scaly skin. Amphibians have smooth skin, okay? They live half of their lives in the water, half of their lives on land, not all of them. I mean, mud puppies live their whole lives in the water. Some salamanders, their whole lives on land. They have to keep their skin moist because their skin's smooth and does not have scales like a fish or a reptile because they're amphibians. So if someone makes the water they live in unclean, well then you, as an amphibian, are not going to have a good time. And I'll tell you what else. Amphibians are very important to ecosystems. You can't just run around thinking that amphibians are going to take care of them. If I were an amphibian, this wouldn't be a problem. I'd relish this. Amphibians are important. And now it's time for... Amphibian or not? A turtle. No way. A salamander. Duh. A creature from the Black Lagoon. This has been Amphibian or Not. Hear that? It's the sound of amphibians. <laughs> when you hear frogs chirping, ribbit, it's usually a mating call. And they're, they're trying to meet each other. It's kind of like flirting on the phone. They're saying, I'm here, and I'm interested. They have their own language. Like, like that, that, that right there. That might mean, uh, hi. <laughs> and then, and that, that's probably, uh, move on. This is my part of the swamp. 
Anyway, if you listen, it's just uh, riveting. Calm down, you guys. I meant riveting. I'm not riveting. When a frog croaks, it puffs up the skin around its neck and vibrates the air really fast. It's like a balloon. <laughs> All you do is blow up the balloon like this. Take the mouth of the balloon and stretch it out. Let air out of the balloon slowly and you'll make some noise. A frog does the same thing when it blows air out of its mouth and over its vocal cords to make some funky sounds. Nice, Toad! Ugh, no way. And get warts? People get warts from viruses, not from toads. The bumps on its back are glands that produce poison to keep people away from them. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Get them open there. Reset! Nice, Toad! Yeah. Ugh. Really? Really? You can't get warts from a toad. Hey, 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 hey. What we are seeing in the development of a tadpole to an adult may very well be a glimpse of the millions of years of slow change or evolution that transformed a fish into a resident of both the land and the water. Breathing air? What a gas! <sighs> Amphibians were first. Please <sighs> consider the following. Take a look at this. It's our fabulous floaty fish model of science. Now, fish have a swim bladder, a sac that they can fill with oxygen. When their swim bladders are full, fish float up. When their swim bladders are not so full, they sink down. Well, sort of. Now, amphibians, like tadpoles, use their gills to breathe. The emerging larva lives a fish-like existence. There are gills for respiration, and there is a well-developed tail for swimming. They grow lungs with what was in their ancient ancestors a swim bladder. Then their gills shrink away completely and they grow legs. As normal maturation proceeds, gills disappear and limbs bud out and become functional. These are the legs. There, <laughs> legs. Then they end up breathing air. Soon the amphibian is nearly mature, ready to live in air. Now see, breathing air lets an animal get about 10 times as much oxygen as breathing from water. Wild! So frogs can get a lot of air and jump around way more than a fish can. By living on land, amphibians can find things to eat that other animals back in the water can't get to. Amphibians found a niche, a special place in their ecosystem walking or hopping all over the place. And they're still doing it 400 million years later. They are something like fish out of water. Their movement over the land is reminiscent of the movement of fish in water. We live on land too, but amphibians did it first. Not bad. Well, thank you for sitting high and dry with me as we considered the following. There's a Cut. lot. There's another one right there. Got him. Got him. Got him. Really? Look, at his, look at his eyes. Look like flowers. <laughs> you can see his hind legs and his front legs are coming in. It's going to turn into a tree frog when it develops all the way. I got a toad here. They have to stay wet or they'll dry out. The frog has like a clear eyelid on his eye called the nictating membrane. And when the frog is in the water, then it helps keep out moisture. But when it's outside the water, it helps keep the eye moist. I got him. Okay, I got him. He's kind of sticky. So I'm scared. Kind of squishy. Oh, <gasps> and it's gone. Well, we're going to let him go now and let him <laughs> grow, I guess. Huh. 
Uh, that's almost 37. That, that, that's normal. Mm -hmm. That would be uh, 98.6 oh, for you adults. Anyway, humans are warm-blooded. We keep the same body temperature all day. If it goes up and down just a few degrees, we're in real trouble. But amphibians aren't like that. Amphibians are cold-blooded. They let their body temperature go up and down with their surroundings. In fact, amphibians use their surroundings to control their body temperature. Like, let's say an amphibian feels too cool. Well, then it'll bask in the sun till it warms up. If it feels too hot, it'll crawl into a hole or dive into water to cool off. <sighs> Kids, every year thousands of my amphibian brethren lose their limbs to see if they really taste like chicken. <laughs> Let me tell you, we need frogs. They're used by scientists to judge the cleanliness of our streams. No frogs, no good. Know what I mean? So, if you have a choice between chicken and frog, please, choose the chicken. Thank you. I mean... <gasps> okay, I'll be over here if you need me. Bye! <laughs> See this frog? It's the same color as this leaf. Not only is it the same color, it's the same shape. Camouflage helps an amphibian survive because it keeps it from getting eaten and allows it to hide out so it can hunt. <laughs> it's a leaf frog. No, not a leap frog, a leaf frog. Leaf frog. <laughs> See this? Mm -hmm. It's a waxy tree frog. Its skin is the same color and slipperiness as the leaves and the trees it lives in. It's camouflage. Camouflage helps an amphibian survive, helps it hide out. No. 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 So amphibians are what? Cold-blooded, that's right. And they what? Don't keep the same body temperature all day. Frog back legs are much stronger than their front legs. So they get around by leapfrogging. <laughs> Don't you? Huh? I'm going to follow him. In this laboratory, we study amphibians, mostly frogs. And what we're interested in is how the shapes of the animals reflect their function. The bullfrog, for example, has very long legs because it does a lot of jumping. It also has webbed feet because it does a fair amount of swimming. Here's an example of an amphibian that never leaves the water, even after it metamorphoses. You notice how its feet are modified for swimming? This amphibian's feet reflect what it does in its natural environment. The toes are expanded and act like suckers and allow it to climb vertically into trees and even hang upside down. Another unusual amphibian which never leaves the water even after metamorphosis. And in fact, what he's demonstrating is one line of defense for frogs, their mucus slime, which makes them difficult to hold. Frogs don't live in the lab, they live in the field, which is where we do most of our work. So this one may have started off here as a tadpole last year, metamorphosed last year, and now he's returning here to feed. I think maybe the heat of the day has brought him here to cool off. Yeah. So, so this is the bullfrog tadpole. This animal, although it's a fine amphibian, should not be in California. It was introduced here by humans and can have a dramatic impact on native amphibian populations. The reason that we're out here in the field studying the animals is to try and understand if all of our laboratory studies really mean anything. And the more we can understand about these animals and their environment, the better we are at conserving and protecting them from extinction. You have to be in a place like this to see an animal like this, a Sicilian. They're, They're like, like frogs, frogs and salamanders, salamanders but, but they, they don't, don't have, have any legs. legs. It's got to look like this, so you're not going to find any of these. 
Sicilians eat insects, worms, and even small snakes. They look like worms or snakes, but they're amphibians. Like all amphibians, Sicilians have teeth, a backbone, and an excellent sense of smell. They got slimy skin, and they're cold-blooded. When Sicilians get scared, they coat themselves with slime and slide into the dirt. It's got to be South America or Asia if you want to see a Sicilian. Many Sicilians give live birth. They go through metamorphosis inside their mother. See? So amphibians go through a process called what, Bill? Metamorphosis. Like egg to tadpole to uh, frog. See, what I'm saying is... Most amphibians change. Right! <laughs> Not that bad. Not that bad. Yeah, nice tie. Thanks. Yes, they are. They don't keep the same temperature all day. Sometimes they can't see when it's dim. They're not reptiles. We're amphibians. Gonna be near water till the day they die. He don't wanna get dried out. He wants to keep his slime. Living in the water and living on the land. Come on, Tampa, let me understand. Frog salamanders, newts and toads, Sicilians do that funky thing that we call the amphibians. Yeah. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. If you'll excuse me, I've got some cutaneous respiration to detect. See ya. I'll, I'll keep an ear out for you. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. See, they can't see me because I'm camouflaged. Yes, we can, Bill. They're amphibians. Then you got your frogs. You got your frogs. And salamanders. 80% of all amphibians are frogs and salamanders. No, no, frogs and toads, I was kidding. Frogs and toads, 80% of all amphibians. You see, all of these different animals, it's, it's quite a variety of amphibians, they've all found a niche in their ecosystem. They've found a special way to survive that's like no other animals. And they've been at it for 400 million years. 